right. So I just want to thank Accessible Arts for the invitation to facilitate today, um, which sometimes people think, oh, what a job, but it's actually, I like this kind of thing, hearing what everybody else thinks, so I hope you do. Well, this morning, as we heard, we had three speakers, uh, Steve Lee, Naomi McCarthy, and also Claudia Chidiak, to start putting seeds in your head about some of the things that you might be dealing with or want to know about, or still, how do I do something that you haven't done before? Anyway, we um, have a great think tank here, and we've got three new speakers, as uh, Jennifer said. So, um, we have um, uh, Kate Baker and Louise McCormack and Jenny Bissett, who are kind of working in the policy area. And what I was interested in is about, there's also policy which people talked about at local government level, disability po policy at state level and even at federal level, but how is it to implement it? So, Jenny might give us a spin on what she thinks from a local government perspective. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for listening to me. Um, I'll just um, tell you a bit about how Blacktown delivers its arts and cultural development program. Um, we have an arts and cultural development unit and that include, and our, our primary delivery mechanism is through the Blacktown Arts Centre. Um, <coughs> we also have a cultural planner and we also have an Aboriginal Arts Development Officer who works both of whom work across council. Um, we're also lucky enough to be host to the Western Sydney Children's and Young People's Literature Development Project, which is an initiative of state government and that's funded by Arts New South Wales and um, DET. Um, in terms of the area of arts and disability, um, Jen said that um, the three of us who are speaking now represented organisations that made significant leaps in the area of arts and disability. I have to say that at Blacktown, our work in this area is fledgling. Um, we're very lucky that we've got the Accessible Arts Western Sydney team actually working out of our offices, so we've got ready access to um, information and support in relation to developing arts and disability policies and um, programs. But to, I would never claim that we've made significant leaps. I suppose in terms of hosting the Accessible Arts team there, that's quite a big leap. And, um, we are just venturing into delivering um, arts programs with and for people with disabilities. Uh, I think um, what I thought it might be useful um, in this context is to talk a bit about um, the challenges for me as a worker in local government in actually getting policy up in the first place and secondly in implementing that. I think that um, and then also provide some advice um, for people who don't work in local government as to how you might influence policy and, pro and programs in local government. And there are, there are, there are actually um, regulatory mechanisms for you to be able to do that as local organisations and local residents. Um, first of all, in terms of um, working within the organisation and trying to get policy um, adopted, let alone implemented, I think the area of, in, in the area of arts development and in the area of disability um, it's a bit of a challenge, mainly because uh, local council, certainly my experience of working in local government, is that council wants to be everything to everybody. And when you're trying to introduce new programs or when you're trying to expand or develop programs, um, it's, you're really talking about, in, in particular in the arts and in the area of disability, you're really talking about having to develop affirmative action strategies. So that means putting more resources into one area than in another. And councils don't like to do that. They like to appear to be even-handed. And we're, I guess the other challenge in local government is that certainly um, where I work in Blacktown, really the traditional activity of local government, which is the roads, rates and rubbish activity, prevails and is really the priority. So it's very hard to get um, resources for other areas of work. Um, so, whenever we are trying to develop policies or strategies for the arts, or for disability, or for um, strategies to support our emerging communities or our Aboriginal communities, we're really talking about having to argue for affirmative action strategies and moving money from one area to another area and actually prioritising um, a particular area, and that's often seen as playing favourites. So that can be very tricky um, from an internal perspective. The other thing is local government tends to work, um, that, that it tends to be organised in silos, 
and all of our rhetoric in the arts and in the disability area will be about working in an integrated way across council. And that's actually very hard to do in, in practical terms. The way that we've managed to do it um, at Blacktown is to develop personal relationships with people in other areas and then move on to trying to convince them about the merits of the content of the work. Um, so that, that's, that's um, another challenge, I suppose. The other challenge in terms of um, policy is um, the implementation, of course, and we can get, it's hard to get policies adopted, it's even harder to get them implemented because it always costs money and it's always about shifting resources around. But that's everyone's story, so I'm going to go into that. <laughs> um, the, I, the second part of what I wanted to talk about was how on the outside of local government you can actually influence local government policy making and um, local government um, policy delivery, I suppose, program delivery. I think um, it's really useful to find out about how your council is structured and the kinds of services they offer and the kinds of staff that they employ that are there to support community organisations. Um, and you can usually do that through their websites. Most councils now have reasonable websites and you can, you can find that kind of information out. The other thing I think um, in trying to develop um, relationships with local government is to work through peak um, advocacy and representative bodies because it's much easier for local councils to deal with representative bodies than to deal with, um, you know, dozens or hundreds of individuals. So use your local organisations, um, peak organisations and ad ad advocacy bodies as your kind of conduit to local government. Um, and local government is usually uh, very interested in developing partnerships with community organisations to do kind of joint strategic development and joint service delivery. Um, <clears throat> the other strategy, I suppose, is to actually get to know your local councillors and um, get in their ear as often as possible. Um, and um, I, th I think that the more they hear about areas um, that might be considered to be marginal in the whole scheme of things in local government, the more it becomes a mainstream issue. And <coughs> in my experience, councillors are always bringing to the table um, issues that are raised with them by individual residents in their wards. So it's, it's very good to get to know who your local councillors are and to get in their ears as much as you can. Um, the other thing, there are actually some formal mechanisms for um, influencing council policy. Um, councils have to undertake consultations in certain areas of their work. Certainly every local government is required to develop a social <coughs> plan and most councils also have cultural plans. And in developing those they will go through a community consultation process. That's generally something that will be advertised broadly and will certainly be information about that on council websites. The other thing is that local government is required to uh, put on exhibition their annual management plan and their management plan details their budget and it also details um, their priority areas for development in the community around, around <coughs> all of the areas of responsibility. <coughs> so that management plan has to go on public exhibition and the purpose of that public exhibition is to get community input. I think that um, I, I think that there's often not a lot of response to those um, management plans on exhibition, but that is one of the key areas where communities, um, where organisations and individuals can actually make themselves heard. The other mechanism is through council advisory committees. Um, Blacktown Council has a range of um, advisory subcommittees. Their purpose is to advise council on different policy areas. In Blacktown, one of, one of our committees is um, an access advisory committee which is primarily concerned with issues for um, our residents with disabilities and how council delivers best to them. We don't have a cultural advisory committee, um, um, but we do have a cultural plan and there's a regular review of that cultural plan where input can be made from the community. So I think the key in terms of having input to those, um, to those formal consultation processes to keep an eye on your council's website, keep an eye out in the local pa papers because there will always be notices about those consultations being undertaken. So that's where I'll leave it, I think. I just thought some practical ideas might be.